so I literally just imagine this is like in the Bible. This is so cool. Like this is a Jesus moment. There's a crowd forming because they're curious of what's happening. So we begin praying for each of the girls. One of them just got an ACL surgery and she still has pain. It's still stiff, supernaturally healed, healed, and she can walk like normal. And then they see more of their teammates and they're like, come, they're healing us, they're healing us. So I'm like, what is happening right now? There's a, probably a group of like, I don't know, 30 to 50 people, maybe a crowd of just witnessing God's love. And I just began to have more and more faith. And I'm like, God is healing people right now. God loves every single one of you. And this boldness just comes out of me. And in that moment, I was like, man, if I had not taken this risk of, of sharing God's heart, of praying for, for healing, imagine none of this would have happened. So. Johnny, can you share with us your full name and what you do for a living? My name is Jonathan Santos, and I'm a business owner of a creative agency. Uh, how old are you? I am 23 years old. I'll be 24 October 15th. And how long have you been walking with the Lord faithfully? I've been walking with the Lord faithfully since the age of 17, my senior year of high school. Johnny, did you grow up in the church? Do you, do you have any like religious background? So my mom would always take me, my brother, and my sister to church. So we always grew up in church. My dad on the other side wouldn't go to church. Um, he was always dealing with a lot of alcoholism and never really went to a church. Was there any uh, point from church that you had like any encounters with Jesus? So I always knew of Jesus, but I never had a relationship with Jesus. I would go to church, you know, sing the songs, go to Sunday school, have to stay uh, for all the long services, but I never really had a true encounter with God. Hmm. What did your life look like uh, before encountering the power of Jesus? Jeez. All I remember is at the age of 13 is when my life went to a drastic downfall. Uh, at the age of 13, I began to get introduced to pornography. Uh, at that age, I had some neighborhood friends that would literally live across the street that were about five years older than me, um, would begin to introduce porn and what it was to masturbate. Um, at that age, I began to explore these sexual desires, these hormones I would have. I would begin to try to reach out to different girls in my school because it was a thing. Everyone and, and anyone, they were losing their virginity. They were beginning to smoke weed. They were beginning to drink, skip school and join literal, literal little gangs. Uh, so in the beginning of middle school, I was, I didn't know who I was. You know, I went to church, I knew that background, and I was always fearful of my mom because I knew if she found out that I would be doing things, um, I knew I'd be in trouble. And for some reason, that, that just kept me from falling into going to skipping parties, joining the gang, sleeping with different girls in middle school. Um, it always put just the fear in me. I, I believe like that was even God's way of putting the fear of the Lord in me. But yet, even in my MySpace days, I would text, you know, females, and I actually have some of these messages still saved. And I look back and the language I would use to speak with them and how we would talk. It, it's so cringy now, but at the time, it was the norm. Everyone around me did it. Everyone around me talked to females to get something, right? To, to have sex, even at such a young age. So leading up to high school, I had that in mind. You know, I, I went to a very... Uh, very limited school. The teachers would get fired or quit because the school was just so bad. I remember even in my math class, one of my teachers quit um, because one of the kids were having sex in a closet and they would get tortured. The teachers would get harassed by, again, these middle schoolers. They would harass them and, and hit them and say mean things to them. And again, teachers didn't like that. So they would quit or teachers would, wouldn't be the best. So I didn't really learn too much in middle school. So with that in mind, I always felt like I wasn't intelligent. I always felt like I didn't know, um, I didn't know how to do school. I didn't know different subjects. I always felt like I just knew bare minimums and I, and I could never really achieve anything. So with that mindset, I went into high school 
And in high school, freshman year, I dealt with a lot of loneliness. I dealt with a lot of depression. Um, I remember moments when I was in school in, in the cafeteria in lunchtime, and I would sit like literally full packed table with a bunch of friends I grew up with, and I would feel so alone. I would feel so, so alone. And there would be moments where I just wanted to cry. And I felt like no one saw me, no one heard me, no one cared about me. And with all that in mind, you know, I would still be curious about uh, women, about sex, about all these different things, but yet still going to church faithfully every Sunday, every Friday, you know, having my church life. But then at home and then at school, I would live this completely different life. Uh, high school, I'd say, was probably the worst time ever. Um, my high school years were the worst time of my life. I felt so, so purposeless. I felt like I didn't know who I was or why I was on this earth. I began to explore relationships. I probably had about 13 girlfriends in the time of middle school to high school. And I would date around, basically dating group friends. So I would date a friend and then all of her friends. I, I learned to be unfaithful. I learned to not really care about a person, but just go after what I desired. If I liked the girl and what she had, then I would go after her and break the girl's heart. And even moments I had my heart broken where they wanted something else, they would cheat. So I learned very early on how damaging relationships could be, how damaging and hurtful people could be in breaking you and, and breaking your trust. And at this time, are you having sex or you're not having sex yet? So I began at the age of 16 was when I began to have courage. That's when I began to say, you know what? I don't really care what my mom will think. I don't really care what my mom will say. I want to begin doing these things. I, I began to get really curious. I, at this point, I was highly addicted to pornography, masturbating multiple times a day, looking at porn every chance I get. Were your parents aware of any of this? My parents never knew. Again, I don't know if they heard stuff, but they never mentioned it, but they never knew uh, what I was dealing with. So continue to the relationship that really made a turn for my life in the worst way, worst way possible. I began to date a girl from my church, actually. So we both grew up in church. We both had a background of church. Um, and we began to date. Again, it began innocent. You know, we barely saw each other. Um, but then we began to really like each other. And then we began to have the opportunities to hang out by ourselves. And we began to get curious with one another. So it started with touching. It started with us um, exploring our bodies, and then it went to sex. So this was someone that was in church, knew, known in church, and at this point, I began to serve in church. So I began to play in this youth band on the drums. So I was serving already. I was, I was known to be in the church, but what people didn't know on Saturday, I'd be with her at movie theaters, wherever we could be privately. Uh, trying to to touch each other, trying to, you know, continue things on. And then Sunday, I'd be right at church as if nothing happened. So we continued this relationship about two, probably two and a half years. And it was the most toxic relationship of my life. I mean, very toxic. So I was dealing with a lot of trust issues. She was dealing with a lot of trust issues. So it was this constant this constant jealousy that we couldn't have friends. So uh, we would call each other names. We would we would argue all the time. But the crazy part is the only time we would be good when we'd be together, you know, without our clothes on, you know, touching each other in private. That would be the only time when there was peace, when, when it was love. So I had an understanding of that love was me touching someone. I had an understanding and I learned that love was was me giving you something, me giving you my body, me doing something to you that gives you pleasure. And it was very toxic. It was, it was very hurtful. So so where did the, the, the change come? What, what happened that made you realize that what you were doing, you know, was not the best thing? So like I was saying, I dealt with a lot of loneliness and depression and even suicidal thoughts. Like I was a very angry person. Um, I always uh, carried all all things people said or did to me inside and just let that bottle up. So what I would do is um, I would cry pretty much every night. I, I would literally cry myself to sleep just because of how alone and, and worthless I felt. Did you ever communicate that with anybody? I never felt I could trust anyone with what I was really feeling inside. I always yeah. felt 
like I couldn't be my true self with people. Mm. I would cry myself to sleep um, probably every night. And then, you know, obviously going to church, I'm hearing about Jesus. So I'd, I'd cry out to Jesus. I'd be like, God, help me, please. Like, you know, I don't want to be doing all these bad things. So I had knowledge that what I was doing was wrong. It was it was sinful. Um, it wasn't good. So with all of this going on, I just felt dirty. I felt like I'm not only doing bad outside of church, but I'm also, you know, doing bad with you, God, because like I'm living this second life. I'm living this life that's reckless. So I would pray to him when I would cry at night, cry myself to sleep. And every single time his presence would come. Every single time I'd, I'd mess up. So imagine I'd, I just uh, dealt with pornography, you know, did what I just did, and I go to pray, and then I mess up right after that. Or I go to try to read the Bible, and then right after that I'd mess up. So I always dealt with this shame and guilt of, man, I'm just too dirty. I'm too messed up. Uh, I'm lonely, and it's evident because, you know, I'm, I'm not worthy in any of these areas. So fast forward to a service we were having at church. Uh, it was a youth service and I was playing drums and it was a very powerful service. It was cool. Uh, so I knew about the presence of God. I just didn't know he knew about me. So I played there and then one of the guys that was a guest preacher there asked for everyone to come down, the musicians and everyone, that they want to pray for us. So I'm like, bet, yeah, this is cool. So I went down, you know, I'm ready to get prayer. And then this guy comes and lays his hand on me presence of God comes over me and he begins to tell me my entire life all of the loneliness the depression the suicidal thoughts all the pain I felt everything I was dealing with and feeling in that moment God was telling me through this person tears just filled me because I felt so known I felt so loved I felt like God cared and I fell to the ground and he said get back up and he continues praying for me. And the last thing he said was, leave the girl. I said, okay. I said, God, this is all I needed. This is everything I need. I know you love me. I know you, you, you know about my situation. I know you, you know about all of this. I want to fully seek you now. I don't want to be held back by anything. So that same day, I cut every tie off with that girl. I said, I'm sorry. I want to pursue God. Um, it's done. I cut off all the relationships. I cut off all the porn. I cut off every single thing that was limiting me from God. And I just began to go full force. I would go pray in my room and I wouldn't even be able to say words. The presence of God would just fill my room and all I could do was cry and cry and cry. And I just felt so loved. I felt so appreciated. I felt like like, like I was just so fulfilled. I, I felt so complete. I felt like everything else that I went through didn't matter. All the loneliness was broken. All the suicidal thoughts were broken. All the addictions were broken. Every single thing that I was dealing with, God met me in that moment and completely just freed me. So from that day forward, my life was never the same. I began to just be hungry. I mean, hungry, hungry, hungry. I would pray all the time. I would go to these different services and just encounter a new area of God that I never knew. So I began to, to go with my brother and, and my sister-in-law to these different conferences. And that's where we would see the supernatural. Our church wasn't really known for, for seeing God's power or the spiritual gifts or seeing people get healed or delivered. It wasn't really known for that. But we were hungry because we knew there was more to God. So we would go to these different conferences like Heidi Baker, Todd White, all these famous uh, uh, different preachers. And we would just be so curious of what God could do. So we would learn about healing and then we begin praying for people to get healed. We would learn that God speaks. So we begin asking God questions for people. We would learn that, that God delivers people and brings freedom. So we began praying for people that they would get set free. And ever since that day, I never looked back. I never stopped pursuing God. I just felt completely in love. And to this day, um, I've become a leader of a whole ministry to this day. I become uh, a husband, I become a business owner. From where I was to where I am now, it is only a testament of God's love. I recently preached um, in Puerto Rico and God just came in the room and just freed so many young people with some so many similar things of, of so many things that I was dealing with at that time at their age. And God has just used my life and marked my life to touch people's lives. Now I, I lead a ministry team at our church. 
I pray for people on a constant basis. I minister to people. I've seen people get freed from addictions that they've dealt with their whole lives. I've seen people get free from witchcraft. I've seen people get uh, delivered from pornography addictions, from soul ties, from having sex with so many partners. I've seen God do so much, and it only came from that one moment where I said, yes, God, I want to be completely used by you. I want to be completely... um, I want to be completely yours. Yeah. Can you speak about that encounter that you had with uh, the healing power of God? Um, you ha- you are someone that I personally know who definitely has an anointing when it comes to supernatural healing. Can you just speak to that and, and let the people know what happened? So the first time I experienced that God could heal and even heal through us, use us to heal people, It was this time I was invited to a church service by a friend, and it was probably a three-day event. It was a Hispanic church. It was very small, and the preacher finished his message, and he asked, is there anyone here who is not a leader that wants to pray for someone that God would heal them? Uh, So this lady went up because she had a problem where for weeks or months, she, her menstrual cycle Uh, wouldn't stop. She just kept flowing with blood. And of course, this is very uncomfortable and painful. So she went up, went up believing that God could heal her. So I'm like, yes, this is so cool. Someone's going to pray for her and God's going to do it. My friend lifts my hand up and I'm like, what are you doing? They call me up to go pray for this person. And he's like, all right, just put your hand on her and repeat after me. So I repeat after him. And all he says is, Jesus, come and heal this woman. And I began crying and shaking, as so does the woman. And I just began praying. I I don't know what I'm praying. I don't know what words I was saying, but I just continued praying over this lady's life, praying God's blessing, praying that God would bring breakthrough to her. And again, I've never prayed for healing in my life. This was the first time I encountered this. So what's happening in this moment is, is so strange to me. So she ends up falling to the ground. And because I'm overcome with the presence of God, I fall to the ground. After this, she gets up and she speaks on the mic. She, she feels that, that the pain is gone and it's stopped, that she's completely healed. So I'm like, my God, you just used me to heal. I, I didn't even know that this was possible. I didn't know that this was something that you could do, God, let alone in someone like me that just got saved, full of addictions, full of brokenness, full of shame, and got free from all that. And now I can pray for people and, and they get healed. And from that day... I just began believing that God could heal. So one of the crazier situations that happened was we had a a conference here at church and I was leading one of them. I was leading a a teaching about healing and we're going to go out and preach to people and evangelize to them. There was about a 15 to 20 group of girls and they all had uniforms. They, They looked like they were on a soccer team and they passed by me. I was with two other girls and I was teaching them how to share the gospel, how to pray for people. And they move behind me in the corner of my eye, I'm like, hmm, I should probably go talk to them. But I'm a little fearful, even in this moment where I'm helping people evangelize to people, but I'm like, whatever, God, I'm gonna I'm go talk to them. I'm gonna go uh, share your heart. I'm gonna see if, if any of them have pain. So I go up to them like, hey, what's up guys? You know, we're just here sharing God's love, praying for people if they're sick. Um, do any of you guys have any problems? They're like, all of them, basically all of them. We're like, yeah, we're all, we're, we all have something. But there's a specific one girl that they all point to that that she recently had a concussion. So she couldn't play her games anymore because she was concussed. So I'm like, okay, I want to pray for you. So I pray for her. She, so she, what she was having, she was having like pain in her head and dizziness and nausea, even in that moment. So I pray for her. I command all the pain to go and I pray for supernatural healing to come over her. In that exact moment, she begins smiling so hard. She's like... I feel like lightness. I feel like the weight is off of me. And all the girls are like, me next, me next, me next. And all of a sudden, there's this crowd of girls around me. And then we're in a a pretty public area. So all these people are just surrounding us at this moment. So I literally just imagine this is like in the Bible. This is so cool. Like this is a Jesus moment. There's a crowd forming because they're curious of what's happening. So we begin praying for each of the girls. One of them just got an ACL surgery and she still has pain. It's still stiff, supernaturally healed, healed, and she can walk like normal. 
And again, all, all these different types of pains that these girls have. And then they see more of their teammates and they're like, come, they're healing us, they're healing us. So I'm like, what is happening right now? There's a, probably a group of like, I don't know, 30 to 50 people, maybe a crowd of just witnessing God's love. And I just began to have more and more faith. And I'm like, God is healing people right now. God loves every single one of you. And this boldness just comes out of me. And in that moment, I was like, man, if I had not taken this risk of, of sharing God's heart, of praying for, for healing, imagine none of this would have happened. So we stay connected with them and they have a game the next day. And, I'm, and I prophesy over them, I declare over them that they're going to win this game, that they're going to supernaturally win this game because it was crazy. About half of their team were injured. Like their best players were injured that they could not play. They text us, they won the game. So God supernaturally intervene, intervenes in their lives, touches them, shows them that he loves them and heals them. Imagine they could never say that God does not love them or see them. They could never say God does not heal because they're a living testimony of that. They're a literal storyline that God can heal them. Hmm. How old were you at that time when all of that was happening with the soccer team? I'd say I was probably 20 years old. About 20 years old. Sheesh. That's an experience. It was it was crazy. Um, it was really crazy because this was the time where I was beginning to step into leadership roles. This was the time where I was beginning to get responsibility over people. The crazy part is when I first got saved around that area, um, someone prophesied over me. Basically, all that means is God speaking over you um, and sharing God's heart. They shared that I would be a leader that leads leaders. And imagine a kid that dealt with all these problems, uh, hearing that, I didn't believe it. So when I began to see like these responsibilities added, I'm like, God, you have purpose for my life. You have a calling for my life. And if I just continue pursuing you and being obedient, I'm going to see all of it. I say this a lot of times, if God had not saved me at that exact moment, literally that exact moment, that's when I began to have courage to do worse things. So I believe if I didn't get saved when I did, I would have begun trying the drugs, doing the alcohol, and having sex with multiple girls or even with that same girl. And if I had not got saved at that moment, my life would have either been dead because I dealt with a lot of suicidal thoughts, or I would have had a baby mama with a girl that I really hated, and she hated me. So... Either of the two would have been very terrible situations, but God rescued me exactly when he needed to because my life was headed down. Now, Johnny, looking back at your 23, going on 24 years of life, um, God willing, you have many more years to come. What can you say Jesus has done in your life, if you could just sum it up? Jesus showed me I'm loved. Jesus showed me uh, I have purpose. Jesus showed me that there's true meaning and there's a calling over my life. He showed me that if I pursue a relationship with him and say yes, it's unlimited the things that, that can be achieved. Now, ever since I said yes to Jesus, I was an executive chef at the age of 21, which is pretty much unheard of. I was making a really good salary. <laughs> I was making pretty good money. Um, I was engaged and I was soon to be married. So God completely turned around not only my finances, he turned around my relationships. So because of those toxic relationships, I asked God to send me a wife. I wanted a true relationship. I wanted to stop playing games. I wanted the real deal. So now I have an amazing marriage that influences so many young people, so many older people, and has transformed so many lives. I now have a business that I started with my wife that is now growing in supernatural ways. I now have a home that I can call my own. Not, not a little home, it's, a, it's an amazing, beautiful home full of plants. I now am a ministry team leader, I lead people, I'm a life group leader, I lead about 12 guys. 
Uh, I'm a leader in my church. I serve in different areas. I'm on the worship team. I'm just leveled up in every area possible. And God just supernaturally took me from a place of misery, of hopelessness, of darkness, and brought me and showed me that if I pursue him, if I love him, if I just continue in his ways, there's so much I could do. And even now, the things that I've achieved in my life, even older people that are way above my age say, I couldn't even do that in my lifetime. So for God to do this in the short amount of span that I've said yes to him, imagine the years to come. Imagine the yes that that God could do with your life. For anybody that's watching you, whether young or older right now, um, what word of advice can you leave them with? I would say pursue Jesus. <laughs> pursue Jesus, whether that's you going to a church that you never heard of or looking at uh, different worship teams or preachings. Just pursue Jesus the best way you know possible. He will literally transform your life. I've seen God change the drug addict. I've seen God change the prostitute. I've seen God change the, the widow. I've seen God change uh, people in their darkest points. And even if you're not in a dark point, if you're even in your highest point, there are areas in your heart that don't feel fulfilled yet. There's areas in your heart that aren't happy. But if you give your life to Jesus, there's so, so much more. We're on this world not for any any coincidence. We're on this road for a purpose. So there's a calling, there's an assignment, there's a reason you're put on this earth. And the only reason you'll find it is through Jesus. So if you accept Jesus, if you allow him in your heart, if you make him your Lord, your Savior, if you say, God, I'm going to give you everything, every part of my life. I just want to pursue you. The things that he'll allow you to do and see are amazing, are crazy. If I had not said yes to God, my life would have been full of misery, of hopelessness, of discouragement, of sadness, or even death. So saying yes to God has transformed and leveled up every area of my life.